Yo, what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current third year medical student. And in this video, I wanted to share how my past year of investing went and some mistakes that I made along the way and kind of what I learned um, from my first year of investing. So let's get started. So I'm gonna divide this video up based off of the three portfolios that I have for investing. And the three portfolios that I have are my Robinhood one, my crypto one, and then my long-term dividend investment portfolio. And I kind of want to go over each one and the reason I have each one and what I've learned um, between using all three of them um, and kind of just my general thoughts about investing and stuff. Um, so before I get into the three portfolios, I just want to say that I think you should get into investing as early as possible. I wish that I started earlier. But luckily, one of my friends in med school um, taught me the ins and outs of investing. Well, he taught me option trading, which I'll get into, but I definitely don't recommend option trading to start off with. I just recommend maybe a few long term holds just to get a feel and a sense for how the market works and stuff. But nowadays, it's so easy to buy stocks with all the apps available. Um, so like I use Robinhood and there's a bunch of crypto app exchanges as well that make this whole process a lot easier. So it's interesting because I mean, in high school and in university, and now in med school, I've never had basically a single class that went over investing or finances in this sense. So I did take the initiative to teach myself and watch a bunch of YouTube videos and read um, a couple essays and a couple books talking about like the stock market and the basic principles of investing. So I definitely recommend doing your research and learning the different types of investing before getting into investing because that way you might have like a level head or a clear head when investing, you know, and you won't just sell when, you know, the whole market goes down by like five or 10% and panic, you know, you'll actually just buy more um, so that you increase your position and get the stock for a cheaper price if you think of. Um, but so now I'll get into my three main portfolios that I have and I'll start off with my Robinhood one. So my Robinhood one is kind of like my meme one you can think of, but I do try and invest in companies that I actually believe in companies like um, biotech companies or companies that deal with green energy, <clears throat> things that I think are going to be profitable and important in the future. Um, but sometimes, you know, if I have a couple hundred dollars to spend like on a meme stock, <laughs> I will maybe do that just to be a part of the fun ride. But I definitely don't allocate like more than five or 10% of my entire portfolio into a play like that because obviously it's risky, you know, buying like GameStop option calls is always a risk. Um, and there can be a high reward too, but I try and follow more strict principles of investing. Um, and I try and invest in companies that I think will be profitable in the long term, and also companies that pay dividends, which I'll get into um, in my next portfolio that I'll discuss. But yeah, with regards to Robinhood, um, I have had sometimes a few upsets and difficulties using the platform. Um, sometimes their app kind of crashes and then you can't get in or out of a trade, which is very annoying. And I know a lot of people have lost money this way. And luckily, you know, I only had maybe like $500 in Robinhood at the time, but it was pretty frustrating when the app crashes and then you can't either sell out of a stock that you really need to sell out of um, or buy into something that is currently cheap. Um, so that's why I kind of, um, you know, don't rely on Robinhood for the majority of my investments, but it is very easy um, to just pick up your phone and buy stocks just like, just like that in, in a matter of seconds. Um, and the user interface is really nice. So overall, my experience with Robinhood hasn't been bad, but the majority of my investments don't lie within the Robinhood app. Okay, so this brings me to the second portfolio that I have, which is one of my favorite portfolios and kind of you could think of as my main one but it's my TD Ameritrade portfolio where I do my long-term dividend investing. So I did come out with a video a while ago, I think this past summer, about why I chose to do long-term dividend investing. I think it's a pretty safe route and I kind of like the experience of choosing my own stocks rather than investing in like a mutual fund where they handle that for you. Um, because uh, to some extent, I feel like I can choose companies that might do better overall than if I were to just bet, invest in the entire market itself. And also you can kind of manipulate your dividend yield based on your allocation of certain companies. Um, so for example, like Apple, even though it might be really profitable in terms of capital gains, 
the dividend yield is maybe only like 1.5%. And there are a lot of other companies like AT&T, which have a dividend yield of like 7%, um, which are a lot better in terms of the dividend yield. But of course, Apple might grow a whole lot more compared to AT&T. So I kind of like to have a balance of companies that I believe will grow in terms of capital gains just in their net stock price, but also companies that have consistently been paying a dividend yield maybe over the course of the past 40 or 50 years, because that way you know that you are going to be paid your dividend even in times like these where um, the economy isn't doing too hot, you can still rely on those companies paying out their dividends. Um, which is a nice feeling, you know, even if the stocks are going down, you still know that you're getting paid out some sort of money. <laughs> um, so my long term goal for this is to basically rely on these dividends that the company pays me for passive income. So that, you know, if anything were to happen, if me and my wife were to both lose our jobs, or I just wanted to quit for any reason, I could possibly still rely on paying for rent and for food and for bills with this dividend income. So that's kind of the long-term goal. Um, I have only bought into this portfolio. I haven't sold anything, but obviously, you know, if a company that I've invested in starts to do bad or poorly, um, I can always sell that off and then reallocate that into the, my other companies in my portfolio. And just to give you guys an idea of some of the companies that I hold in my portfolio, um, some of them include like Apple, Microsoft, um, Johnson & Johnson, AT&T, realty income, kind of these large sort of dividend aristocrats or dividend kings, I think is the name that they give them. Basically companies that are very well established, um, either internationally or in the United States, companies that you believe will continue for a very long time, kind of blue chip stocks, and companies that have consistently paid out their dividends um, for at least greater than 10 years, and not only paid out their dividends, but also their dividend price actually increases maybe five or six percent each year because that's another way how the compounding effect can kind of snowball um, if a company increases their dividend each year then that's more money getting paid out for you for just holding the stock um, so that's always nice uh, to have so that basically covers my um, two kind of stock related portfolios and i think if you were to combine my robin hood and my td ameritrade portfolio it would probably be maybe around 70% of like my total money that I have invested. And then the other 30%, which for some people might be a high amount to invest in this class, but um, I'm very optimistic for the future of cryptocurrency. Uh, but so yeah, I have about 30% of my assets allocated into crypto because I do believe crypto is going to be in the future. And I think I'm kind of early, even though a lot of the prices have skyrocketed, I think it's just gonna keep on going up as more large financial institutions adopt this cryptocurrency and i think as more people get introduced to it um, it'll become more commonplace than you think and so i'm kind of diversified within my crypto assets as well um, so the crypto currencies that i own are bitcoin ethereum cardano which is ada um, i also own a little bit of monero uh, polka dot and VGX, I believe, which is the um, like the Voyager app cryptocurrency, which has done extremely well actually in the past few months. Um, and so the tools that I use to invest in crypto, I use the Voyager app uh, because it's commission free. And then specifically for Bitcoin and Ethereum, I actually use um, something called BlockFi. So once I bought my Bitcoin and Ethereum on Voyager, I will transfer those two assets to BlockFi and the reason I hold my Bitcoin and Ethereum and BlockFi is because um, I think BlockFi is pretty secure and it's backed by a lot of major financial institutions. And also the interest rates are amazing on BlockFi. So for Bitcoin, I think there's like a 6% interest rate and for Ethereum, there's 5.25% interest that's like per year. And they pay out actually monthly for just holding the coins. Um, so this is, you can kind of think of as like dividend investing. But the crazy part about this is that, let's say you were paid one Ethereum over the course of the entire year, that Ethereum is not the same as receiving like $5 because if you get a dividend payment of $5, then that $5 just stays $5. But the one Ethereum, if Ethereum itself goes up in value, um, will also increase in value. So that's kind of pretty crazy to think about um, if you know the prices continue to skyrocket that the actual interest payments that you receive will also increase in value without you even doing anything. Um, 
But yeah, so I use BlockFi for that. And they're actually coming out with um, a new credit card that uh, gives you 1.5% back purchases on Bitcoin, which is an amazing thing to have, I think. Um, I'm gonna post a link below for a waitlist that you can get on. And if you use the link that I'm gonna post, you can actually increase um, your position in the line because there's currently a pretty large number of people waiting for this um, Bitcoin credit Visa credit card that they're gonna release. Um, so, and I really want it, of course, too, because I I'm pretty bullish, you know, on on cryptocurrencies being being adopted all across the globe. Um, but I can get into a specific cryptocurrency video <clears throat> in another video because it's a fairly complex topic. But for now, I just kind of want to share that I am invested in it and that I do believe in it. Yeah, so that pretty much covers the three main portfolios I have, the Robinhood one, the TD Ameritrade one, which is the one I kind of take the most seriously, um, and then my crypto one as well, uh, just to be exposed to that market as well. And so I think just to cover um, a few things that I've learned is one, I got burned pretty hard by option tradings back in March. So uh, the first ever investment I made wasn't even buying a stock, it was actually doing a Delta put option back in March when the whole like airlines uh, were tanking. And I remember I made like $200 and I was so excited about option trading. Like I thought it was the greatest thing ever. And from that point on, it all went downhill because I started buying more puts on different companies and stuff. And of course, everything recovered significantly. So I basically, all those puts kind of just expired worthless, which was really tragic. And it took me, basically the entire year to recover that money that I lost from those few options that I bought. So I think that was a good lesson to learn that, <clears throat> I mean, if you're smart about it, I think I could have gone about it um, in a lot better way. I could have set some like limit cells so, to limit my losses, but I kept on thinking that the companies would tank more. So I just held on to my options until they basically just expired worthless, which kind of sucked. So I'd recommend first um, just buying a few shares of companies that you believe in rather than getting into options trading first because options trading is risky and there's always an expiration date. And I think with buying stocks, you can always hold for you know a very long time compared to an option. Unless of course you buy an option with a really long expiration date, but I won't get into that. Um, so that's the first thing I recommend, just starting off with a few um, shares of companies that you believe in rather than doing any of the other complex types of trading. The second thing that I recommend is kind of debated, I think, amongst the investment community. And <clears throat> I'm not trying to say that I have any experience or recommend this type of investing, but I do think diversifying your portfolio is a good idea, but only up to a certain extent. Because if you diversify like way too much, like if you have hundreds of companies in your portfolio, then you might not do that well overall because your money is so thinned out and spread out over so many companies that you might not see that much gains compared to if you were to adjust and invest in four companies that you truly believed in. Um, and if you know three out of the four of them do extremely well, then that could be a lot more profitable for you compared to if you spread your money out over 40 different companies with only like a couple dollars invested into each one. So I do think that diversification can be good, but only up to a certain extent, because you can obviously overdo it and that may have the potential to minimize the gains that you could get um, from the stock. And the final thing that I'd recommend is approaching stocks and crypto with, with a fairly level head and to only invest what you can invest in. You know, don't um, just get rid of all your savings or all of your emergency funds just to invest in the stock market because it is volatile and you can never truly predict what's gonna to happen to the stocks. Um, and it is always a risk, even putting your money into mutual funds, which have obviously consistently gone up over the course of the last like 30 or 40 years, but you never know what could happen. So it is always a risk, but in my opinion, in the long term, um, I think that the market will always be profitable. And if you are willing to invest in the long term and not worry about you know the day-to-day changes or fluctuations in the stock price, then I think you'll definitely be well set in terms of your investments. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how my first year of investing went. Um, I'm really glad I started now. I always wish I started earlier, but I just knew so little about the topic. But feel free to leave any comments below about um, any other questions you have about my investments. And I'll leave a few links down below where you can either get a free stock 
or if you use like my Voyager referral and buy, I think it's like $100 worth of Bitcoin, then we both get like $25 worth of Bitcoin. Um, I'll just leave those links below and feel free to use them if you're interested in getting started with crypto or with stocks. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Stay strong, get rich, and as always, Dr. Bayo.